Okay, so I've got props on now, and uh, just uh, so you can see this. So again, it's very easy to remember uh, which way the props should go because the the um, motors turn inward towards the middle, inward towards the middle, and you want the higher side of the prop turn it, uh, as the leading edge. So inward towards the middle, higher side of the prop. Same here, inward towards the middle, higher side of the prop. So that's all on that. Um, I've also fixed, there's a little battery piece of rubber to stop the battery slipping around that you just uh, peel off the backing tape and I pop that on. Um, and then there's two battery uh, straps that uh, um, just go round. This one's easy. This one uh, is, is where the um, flight controller is. Uh, it's a little snug and um, one of the things I'm always just a bit wary of is vibration or, or transferred vibration from the frame. So um, I don't want, for instance, vibration to be transferred from the frame through the strap. But I think it's I think it's OK because this is just sort of Velcro uh, fluff. And I think uh, when the battery strapped on, the contact will be minimal or minimal enough. So I'm going to strap the battery in. And uh, one of the important things about these copters is to get the centre of gravity right. Uh, and uh, what I've found is that you can see where the GoPro mount ends, so the battery's snug up against there. And it looks to me like these nubs in the frame here, there's two sort of protruding bits in the frame, that looks to me like that's designed as the centre of gravity. And if I hold the copter on those nubs, just balancing, you can see that it balances very nicely. So I think that's a good position for the battery, just snug against the GoPro mount. Um, gives a nice centre of gravity. And uh, then I can... Uh, I can have a, uh, a go. Okay, so I'm going to switch on my transmitter. And I'm going to power up the battery. I'm just going to put the uh, balance plug just between the, the leads there, just so it doesn't flap around. Um, normally, I'd have a saver that uh, I mean, a tidy on here that keeps it out of the way, but I couldn't find those. So, I'm power up. Stabilize mode. Stabilize flight mode. Okay, and the light's flashing blue, which means ready to arm. Uh, so first time I do this, I just want to make sure the thing doesn't shoot off into the air. I think it won't, because we tried the motor motors on the bench. Um, but uh, the the best way to do this is hold down an arm, obviously <laughs> keeping keeping bits out of the way, so I tend to just use my foot and uh, arm. And that's okay, there's no thrust on my foot, so I think... That's, that's quite fast for idle throttle, so what I'll probably do is dial that down a little bit because, um, uh, you know, <laughs> it, it, uh, it feels quite aggressive, but it, it's not so aggressive that the thing takes off in the air. And uh, just check the motors are cool, and they are. So next thing I'm going to do is just throttle, so I'll check again that the motor interlock works. Yeah, and I can feel that. Okay. And what I'm going to do is just throttle up gently, and then 
throttle up enough to just get a little bit of pitch in your control while sorry pitch and roll control while it's on the ground. So. Uh, Okay, so um, motor's still cool, so that's good. Uh, just a couple of things to notice here. So one is that, uh, as always, pitch is inverted. So uh, I was pitching forward and it was pitching back. So what I'm gonna, I'll fix that in the configuration. Um, and uh, the other thing to notice is that uh, um, there was a little bit of oscillation just as I was throttling up and that's a good indication that the, the PIDs are currently too high. So I don't want to start off with PIDs that are too high. That's a good way of smoking the motors. Um, the harmonic notch will have been controlling that quite well, but there's only so much it can do. Uh, so I, what I'll do is I'll dial down the PIDs. I'll probably um, halve them all and just make sure I'm not getting, not getting that oscillation uh, before I take it any further. I'm going to dial down the... Uh, um, the, the spin min value and uh, uh, invert the pitch. Okay, so I'm now connected with Mission Planner. And uh, the first thing is to look at the spin min value. So, um, and you'll see there's a spin arm and a spin min and spin arm is, I think, is too high, so I'm going to drop that to 0 0.8. And then I'm going to drop spin min as well, otherwise there's just too much of a, um, a transition from armed to thrust. So I'm going to make that 0 0.13, I'll just drop it the same, same amount. Okay. Oops, need to be connected. Okay, spin arm 0 0.8. Nope, not 0 0.8. 0 0.08. Oops, that could have been disastrous. And 0 0.13. <laughs> 0 0.8 would have been 80% throttle at armings, but that could have been quite quite dicey. That's a good way of losing a copter. Um, okay, so let's write those. Yep. And then uh, if we just have a look at RC map, these are the mappings of pitch to RC channel. So pitch is channel two, you can see here. So I'm gonna go to RC two, and there's an RC two reversed option that I'm gonna set. So I'm going to reverse RC2. And then uh, just going to have a look at the PIDs. So if we go to extended tuning, and you'll see that um, we can see what the PIDs are set to. So I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to divide these all by two. So um, let's call that 0 0.7, sorry, not 0 0.07, 0 0.07. You want I and P to be the same. Let me do the same for pitch, same for I. And then I'm going to drop D as well. So let's call it 0 0.002, 0 0.002, and then similarly for your, I'm going to drop 0.18, so drop it to 0 0.9, okay, set it to 0.1 final, take that, um, 0 
7.07. I think that is a good. Your eye has doubled. No, I'm not sure. Okay. Oh, uh, your eye is 10%, so it's 0.01. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, there we go. I've set. Uh, I've reduced my PID values and I'm going to disconnect and try it again. Okay, so I've changed those values and I'm going to power up again. Try, oops, try spin armed. And that's a lot better. One of the things I should have said is that uh, the difference between spin armed and spin min sometimes can be enough to lift the copter off. So it's worth doing a, a, an arming and then just do a little bit of a throttle up just, just to make sure that throttling up doesn't, doesn't cause the thing to take off that's another good way of losing a copter so it doesn't look like that's the case so I'm going to throttle up and uh, just try check the pitches right now because your pitch is going in the right direction now and then we'll generally try and lift it off and the motors are still cool, this is another thing really need to check for when you're doing initial tuning is that the motors stay cool so if the filter filters in particular the gyro filter has been set too high then you get a lot of heat into the motors and that can appear really very quickly in a matter of five or ten seconds so um, when adjusting the filters is very important to just to check that the motors are, are cool uh, but that seems to take off okay and uh, the wobbles are, I would say, mostly gone, and the um, uh, 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 and uh, most stay cool. So I, I think that's pretty good. Um, I'm just gonna. What I'm gonna do is download a log, and uh, just have a, a look at the log for that little mini hover, just to see see what's what. Uh, see if there's anything. Um, Odd going on uh, so let's do that okay so I've connected the USB cable uh, and I can download a log by going to data flash logs here in mission planner download a log I'm gonna pick that one the last one um, download selected logs uh, Oh, I already downloaded this, but that's okay. I've got, got that copy, so it downloads fairly quickly. Um, and then I can open this up by uh, doing review a log and finding the file. And that gives me this one. Okay, so here's the log. And uh, I like to just check 
that the throttle looks like it's doing something sensible, and it is. Um, and then next very important thing is, is the harmonic notch working? So you can go to this F field. How many notches have we got? Four notches, that's correct. And okay, so they're all four notches are around about the same level, about 125 hertz. So that looks good. Uh, also, just want to check the motor output uh, in this helper thing. Oops. So this is RC out channels one to four, and you can see that those are all roughly the same level. So um, that means that the that everything's balanced quite well. So that looks good as well. Uh, the notch, just to check that. I could do an FFT to check the notch, but uh, the easiest thing to do is just check that I've got the motors configured correctly. So I found the iFlight uh, page for these motors, and it, in the spec here you can see it says that they are a 12N14P configuration. I can see that in the middle there. So 14P means 14 poles. And uh, I just want to check that the BL Heli setup is for 14 poles. So this is servo BLH poles. And you see 14 is the default, so that's correct. So I'm pretty confident the harmonic notch is working well. Um, the uh, other thing back to the graph. The other thing to just have a quick look at is the rate. So I've got rate here. If we look at R out, and uh, this, this is essentially a percentage. Um, so I'm looking, what I'm interested in is the oscillation here. So uh, you definitely want any oscillation to be below 10%. So that's 0.1. You see that's well, well below. So that's good. Um, pitch out similarly well below 10% and you're again very well, well below 10%. So these these are you know nothing awful is going on in the control uh, loops. Um, nothing to, to cause any sort of, of concern. Uh, the only thing that puzzles me slightly is the throttle value. So the throttle value says that we were hovering at 6% throttle. That seems crazy because spin min was at, uh, we set spin min to 0.8, so 8% throttle was spin min, so it should have been in the air, but this is 6% throttle. So I'll need to figure out why this value is so low. Um, uh, it's it's not clear to me what, what, what the reason is. I, I would expect this to be a little bit above um, spin armed, uh, but clearly it's not. Because uh, if you look at the hover throttle, that's at the moment default of 0.2, which is way, way, way above the throttle value we're actually getting. So I'll need to figure out why uh, that value is so so low. Um, okay, but that is looking good, and uh, I think that's good enough. Uh, to try. Ah, so the other thing to check is the barometer. So let's have a look at the barometer altitude. Okay, so th this is interesting. So you can see here when we take off, there's a big dip in barometer and the barometer height. And that is indicative of two possible things. One is that I haven't got enough foam around the barometer, and so we're getting too much prop wash. But more likely is that this is ground effect because we're hovering very close to the ground. Um, and so probably I need to rerun this test with it up uh, a meter up in the air. Can't do that in my office, but I think there's a setting I can set which turns on ground effect compensation. And I'm going to make sure that that's uh, that that's on. Um, but uh, other than those two uh, two niggles, everything looking really good, and uh, certainly good enough to start um, proceeding uh, with more uh, fine grained tuning.